Hi, I'm the Recruiting Maven and welcome back to my channel. Today's topic of discussion is really a heart-to-heart -heart conversation about the fourth industrial revolution. Now that is the platform for uh, my vlog, um, making sure that um, you know people understand what the changes, the changes that are coming, what they are, what to expect, um, and I have touched on those, you know, uh, the jobs that are going to be basically gone in the next three to five years in other vlogs and I'll definitely post those up at the end of this video. Um, however, I wanted to delve a little bit into the history of how do we get here because I don't think a lot of people address that necessarily. They love to talk about how robots are going to kill us and we're not going to have jobs and it's going to be mass hysteria and chaos and all these negative things and I think um, you know there's so much more to it than that so let's just start with a little bit of a history lesson uh, because I want you to be informed I don't want you to think that all of a sudden this just happened in the last 20 years um, and, and actually it hasn't so I want to go back to 1850 yes 1815 not 1950 um, but Ada Lovelace who was the daughter of Lord Byron yes the infamous Lord Byron um, had a very unusual upbringing. Her mom, Lady Byron, had her study math and science, which was obviously not the norm for that day, uh, or women's education by any means. Um, so it was, you know, really her mother that um, motivated her and and uh, pushed her to the point of um, really just being able to do or to accomplish what she accomplished. And really, her life took a, a turn um, when she was asked to translate an article based on Babbage's analytical engine. Now, she took that article and expanded exponentially on her thoughts about it. Um, and essentially, what happened is that she, uh, while she was writing or translating the article, she theorized and came up with her own ideas. Um, some of which are modern, a part of modern day or the, the nuts and bolts of modern day programming. And by that I mean is that she suggested and described in the article how codes could be created um, for the device, for that engine, to be handled or to handle letters and symbols along with numbers. Um, so in the article she theorized for a method of um, in which the engine could repeat a series of instructions. Again, that's that's something that is seen um, in modern day programming. So, you know, those if and then statements and it loops around for some of you that know, and that's very basic programming and that's as far as I ever got. Um, but it's very interesting because when you look at, you know, programming and, um, you know, I thought, you know, COBOL was the end and be all um, when I was a kid. And I remember those days where um, that was such a great language. And now it's, you know, that's called legacy or it's a nice way of saying it's a dead language almost, you know, like Latin. It's a dead language. Um, but, you know, uniquely enough, things don't just happen. You know, it's not um, something that you woke up one day and all of a sudden it was at your front door. Although I will say that we certainly use um, AI and IOT, you know, that connectivity between the device and a machine, right? That's by default or by definition what IOT is. It's that connectivity, that the communication, that conversation between your app on your phone, and I use this example all the time, and your garage door that opens via your app. There you have it, AI or robotics or really it's IOT, the Internet of Things. So when we look at progression and we, when we look at mass, you know, what has evolved over a very long period of time, it seems like it's, you know, somebody snapped their fingers and here we are, you know. Um, I think that one of the greatest assets that humanity has is really and truly, I believe this to the core, is the ability to create, um, the ability for compassion, um, you know, uh, that's, I don't think that's replaceable. Now, we certainly can become robotic. There's, there's uh, definitely some um, studies going on uh, with regards to Alzheimer's. So what they're doing is they're implanting essentially a chip in uh, lab rats and, um, 
and helping them as as you know they start to forget to do things and you know Alzheimer's you know you you die because your mind can't regulate the functions in your body so they implant a chip in your mind and here you are you have your memories you have your ability to regulate your entire body function and that that's a, a game changer right so you know we're we're also going to become um, AI in and of ourselves um, so with that said you know there's a lot of other discussions we could definitely have and we will have regarding you know the ethics of it because you know then you get into the religious aspect of it and the ethical and the moral aspect of it and people's comfort levels are of course very very different but sticking to the subject matter it certainly is um, you know such a fascinating uh, subject matter but above and beyond anything that's negative that's being said negatively out there about robotics and AI is that you know it, it's I think humanity has a lot more to offer than just the obvious and and to not underestimate us in any way I think that would be you know not a good thing so I appreciate your time please like and share and subscribe to my channel make sure when you subscribe to hit that little button and I look forward to our next conversation. You take care. Have a wonderful day.